Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Dot. Um. <laughs> Coming off an unfortunate disqualification from Lingerie Fighting Championships Booty Camp 2, but luckily transitioning into her own pro uh, promotions uh, performance coming up on April, th April 2nd, I'm sorry, April 2nd in Las Vegas. Jennifer Thomas, how are you today? I am great, Robert. Thank you for having me here. Hey, thanks for talking to me. Listen, you got disqualified last night. How did that happen? <laughs> Yeah, how does everything happen in my life? That's misfortunate. You know, um, what happened pretty much is that I have an issue with one of the judges, and um, I got a little carried away with my trash talking, I guess, and lost focus on my fight. And as, as I was getting into the judge's face, my opponent threw me out onto the judge's table, which in return had me hit the judge on accident. And I got disqualified from the judge because uh, he says that I hit him. He did not see my opponent throw me out into the table, though. He thought that I dived in to attack him, which was not the case at all. So, so I'm really upset about this, you know, because I'm innocent, even though, you know, according, I look guilty to him. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I'm frustrated. I'm upset because I had three wins prior to that. And I was, you know, I was like looking forward to my next win. And this happens. So, you know, but what can I do? I can't do anything but move forward. Well, maybe we'll get it reversed to a no contest and then it can set you up for a rematch. Absolutely. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Well, that's yesterday. That's the past. Booty Camp 2 is, is in the books. I'm sure the, the rematch will be for Booty Camp 3. But we're talking about Women on Fire on April 2nd at The Nerd in Las Vegas. So tell me about the show that's coming up. Yes, I'm really excited about the April 2nd show. It's, um, it's basically, uh, we've got seven matches lined up. And it's a variety of different style of wrestling matches. So you're not going to see just all pro style. It's going to be competitive female versus female. Um, we're even going to challenge men from the audience to come in to wrestle one of us. So that's going to be really exciting and very interesting. Um, so you're fact, pulling a reverse what, Andy Kaufman. That's what I'm really most... Excuse me? You're pulling a reverse Andy Kaufman. Instead of Andy Kaufman being the interim cha or, uh, intergender champion in the 1980s calling women out of the audience, you have your own intergender title and you're calling men out of the audience. That's right. That's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm so excited about this because I can't wait to crush a few male egos that are going to be there that night thinking that they're going to be able to beat one of us it's just no way Listen, so uh, already fragile you know that <laughs> yes i do know that that's why i'm still single <laughs> um so anyways then we're also going to have a pro style match and then at the very end the main event is going to be uh basically um a female wrestler with a blue belt going against a male wrestler with a blue belt so they're going to be equally trained equally in like same weight class and we're going to see how well that goes so is it going to be judo yeah. jujitsu karate like what what type of blue belts are they and you just hit mute on yourself okay yeah so, no yeah okay sorry so, uh, so it's going to be brazilian jujitsu all right, that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So yes. two BJJ Blue Bulls yes. are going on after each other in the main event. Is your title on the line? My PGWA uh, championship belt? Yes, it's on the line. So, um, so I plan on uh, defending my belt, and it'll be interesting because I'm going to be actually doing a pro match inside of an octagon. So th that uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure that I'm doing most of the slams that I don't get slammed. Because we all know an octagon is much more, uh, much more firmer than a uh, wrestling ring. So. That's for sure. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. since you put it out there as this kind of being your dating profile now that you're single and you announced it to the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with everything that's yeah. going on, like, take us through the card. Like, who's on the card? Uh, how's it going to go? I know, um, I believe it was either the last card that you had a fire dancer, or is that going to be this card? Um, I don't believe she might be there. She's, she's 
we were planning on having um, the fire dancer there. She's out of town right now, and she's doing all her best that she can to make the travel arrangements to make it to the show, but that may not be possible. And what was so great about the fire dancer is not only was she just a fire dancer, she was the referee for the show, and she was also a wrestler for this show. So these women were not just wrestlers. We are multi-talented in many different areas of our lives. And if we can showcase that within one show, I think that's even just that much more amazing. So um, I'm really hoping that she can make it. Um, but if she can't, it's okay. It's still gonna be an amazing show. Um, but for the first match, for example, we have MJ the Dominator, who's making her debut along with Lily. And that's going to be a great match because they're both equally um, sized together and it's going to be a competitive wrestling match, a 10-minute competitive wrestling match. And um, it's going to be interesting to see who wins that. And then the second match is we're going to actually challenge a guy in the audience, like I said, to come into the octagon. We're going to blindfold him. All of us girls are going to circle around the guy and we're going to spin him. And when he says stop, Whomever, whatever girl he stops on, that's who he's going to be wrestling. <laughs> so so I can't, I really, really can't wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so that's what we're going to do with, with that match. Um, so like I said, we're just adding different, different styles, different sorts of entertainment. It's not going to be all pro. Uh, we have a bodybuilding match where two bodybuilding girls will be fighting against each other or wrestling against each other. Um, so it's like all women from different shapes and sizes, all different ages, a mix of everything. This is like, you know, just a treasure chest full of amazing, beautiful, and strong women. And um, I'm just really excited about showcasing this because this is our actual first public event. So, yes. I dig it. I can only see what's going to happen in the future where you're going to have, like you, like you said, the fire dancer. You're going to have some trapeze artist or something at some point, bands performing in between shows. So it's going to be kind of like an entire variety show with combat sports. Yes. So I call that real sports entertainment. Because if you think about it, it's going to be real matches. Yes, there will be a couple of pro wrestling matches that has that fantasy element to it as well. But then it's like a circus LA, a circus LA show, you know. So you got a story outside of a story. So you're not gonna, you can't. If you're not looking at one thing, you're gonna be looking at another. You're gonna be captivated by what you see. Now, will I be able to present everything that I see in my mind on April second? No, because it's a small sports bar in Fremont called the Nerd, and it's, it doesn't have it doesn't have everything that in my mind it has. That's what I'm working my way up to. So I'm glad that you see my vision, um, but that's exactly what I'm going for. Well, it's a small show. You know, this is, uh, we'll, we'll call it like a house show. And then eventually when you get to uh, the LA Sports Arena, it's going to be a, a huge production. But, you know, I, yes. I see the potential for the growth with this. Yes. You know, because it's a different type. It's a different, I don't think it's ever been like really done before. If I was to put two people, if I, I'm kind of like a Vince McMahon with Dana White all in one, you know? So, I mean, that's like, that's my goal, you know, and just to present it in a different way that's never been done before. So, um, so yes, this is a house show. And I'm hoping my screen went off. Okay, can you still hear me? I can still hear you. I can still see you. Okay, good, because my screen went off on my end, so I just uh, wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, you know, tell me about Women of Fire. How did this all come about? I remember in the early stages when when we talked about it, you know, you wanted to do something different, something a little more revolutionary than than what we've been used to. And now all of a sudden, you have your own promotion on top of everything else. And I think you did one show prior to this with no audience, and this is the first public display with an actual audience. Yes. Um, well, the re I had an event in September here in Vegas at uh, Future Stars of Wrestling, and that was just a um, live stream only because of COVID. But because things have become a little bit more relaxed now um, and we're allowed to have people in and have an audience, I definitely want to take advantage of that. So, you know, I'm like thinking, let's let's do this. Like, I want to go full throttle, you know, and um, take advantage of every opportunity I get to let these women shine because I think a lot of us have been kind of like hidden in the shadows. And um, I just think it's time to let 
you know, the mainstream population see how special and strong we are. So, uh, so yeah, and I started up my own promotion because, because why not? And also, if you think about it, every single woman's promotion, I mean, they're all ran by, I don't mean this against you or any man, but they're all run by men. Like, I don't know of one woman's wrestling promotion that's ran by a woman. And I want women on fire to be all women. You know what I mean? It's like where women run the show. <laughs> so, I don't, and know, I don't own a promotion. So or anything. Can, right. But I don't own a promotion. So you can talk about all the men that own all the women promotions all you want. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to do something where we're like more female oriented and we have our creative freedom to do as we please. And if we make mistakes, we make mistakes, we'll own up to it. But um, I just think it's special where women are coming together. We're all supporting each other and we're all creating our own empire together. This isn't just me. This is all of us together. And that's kind of like how I want that message to be. This isn't about Jennifer Thomas. This is about women on fire. I dig it. Now, like, is there going to be a pay-per-view for this one? Or is this just going to be an in-house show at the Nerd where if you're lucky enough to be at the live event, you're lucky enough to see it? Exactly. Exactly. So I hope that you can make a little road trip <laughs> to Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, I, I, unfortunately, I can't this April, but I will be there for the next show. It seems like Vegas has become the base of operations for everything right now. Yeah, the whole things are open over here. You know, I mean, you can you can have a life in Vegas. So, you know, I live in Los Angeles, but I've been hanging out here in Vegas where I'm at right now just because I can go to a gym here. I can go to a wrestling class here. I can go to a restaurant here and not do patio dining. So there's so much more here to do in Vegas. And I feel like this is where I need to be at right now, especially with business, to uh, move forward in my career life. So. So are we smelling a permanent relocation in Las Vegas? You know what? Everyone asks me that. And I always say no, because my heart is really in LA. This is only a temporary spot for me, but I'm an LA girl. So yeah. Until six from, months from now, we find out that you just bought a condo in Vegas and you're going to be living uh, in both cities part-time. Okay. All right. I like the sound of that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better have that show in that arena that you were talking about. <laughs> Make it happen. You know, it'll, it'll come. Um, you know, you mentioned yeah. the promotions that were all owned by men. I mean, you wrestled for WOW at one point. That That's owned by David McLean and as well, Jeannie Buss, the, the owner of the Lakers. So she's a co-owner. She's not the, the entire uh, force behind it. Uh, Glow was again starred by David McLean and Matt Simber. I think there's Shimmer. There was uh, another pro another couple of promotions, but yeah, like you said, they were all male, male orientated, at least from the office side. Um, you've been in wrestling before. You're a Paul Heyman girl. I know. Uh, you know, Paul gave you the thumbs up uh, when you started out when you went to OVW. Um, what's it like now being the boss yourself instead of working for somebody else's promotion? Much more stressful. <laughs> it's very challenging to. Uh, take things on your own. Um, but I believe that the, I, I, like I said, I see the vision. So therefore I'm going to see the reward in it all. Like what you put in is what you get out. And um, I, I just feel like in order for me to expand and have my own creativity and be, because um, every time I've worked for another promotion, I feel like I have to be what they want me to be. I can't just be me, you know? Um, and so I just decided I'm just gonna do what I wanna do, you know, and hopefully get all these women on board and we can all do what we wanna do. <laughs> so, you know, because that's what I'm all about is creative freedom, you know, like, like I want you to be who you are. If you're goofy, be goofy. If you're serious, be serious. If you like coming out in a G-string, come out in a G-string. I don't care, you know, I want you to be you because I think that's, when we live our best moments is when we can be our authentic, our authentic selves. So, mm -hmm. well, let's let's take the evolution forward. You know, this is only the second show, and again, the first one was was at uh, Future Stars, and there was no audience. This is the first one with an audience. Uh, you know, the build up, the goal, eventually a TV series. You know, a la uh, you know WWE, a weekly episodic thing. Would it have more of a glow feel from the '80s, where you sat there and like? There's little sketches in between. 
um, you know, kind of like a, a burlesque type show where there's wrestling, there, there's all this other forms of entertainment, like a wrestling variety show, essentially. Uh, the, the uh, which remind me of, uh, is Lucha Bavoom. You kind of remind me of Lucha, that, that kind of reminds me of Lucha Bavoom, you know? Um, to be honest, I'm not there in my head yet to see like where I want to go. But in, but when I see it, like when I said Cirque du Soleil, I'm thinking why not have something at the Bellagio or one of the big casinos and being offering a show, you know, something like that. Because this isn't all, because a lot of the matches are going to be like real matches. We're going to be sweating our asses off. We're going to be like really freaking going at it with each other, you know. Um, so it's not fake. It's not like a, like when I think of glow, I'm thinking of just kind of like, funny comedy skits kind of thing um i don't see it being that way i see it being more uh artistic more more i don't know just more captivating and i don't want to say more serious but i just want it to be like like hypnotic you know almost kind of like you're at a pink floyd concert or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you no. did mention Lucha Vavum. I, I've covered a couple of their shows, so I know what their shows are like. They have burlesque dancers, they have mariachi bands, or, or like you know, uh, rock and espanol type stuff, and wrestling matches in between. So they put on a great. Well, what show. I would like, yeah, they do. I mean, they're very entertaining. I actually did one of their shows once too, and it was a great experience to be a part of that. You know, so I think pretty much like all of my life experiences, being in different places, working for different promotions. Being with WWE at one time and their developmental and just getting a taste of everything that's out there, it's kind of led me to put it all on kind of like one plate and try to make it like a kamikaze <laughs> and kind of like make it my own, you know. So um, I'm not against any style that I have experienced or been a part of. I think they all have their special uniqueness. I just kind of like want to like put it all together and see what comes out of it. And, and for people mm -hmm. that have ADD, this is perfect because they get a little bit of everything. It's not just like one type of show only. Um, you know, we have currently, they don't want to call it that, but essentially the Wednesday night wars between NXT and AEW and AEW has its style. WWE has their style with NXT and you're getting similar stuff every week because that's what the promotions are built on. What So basically what you want to do is you want to give a flavor at, that's slightly different every time. So say Vegas example, and you use Bellagio, if I come to the show on Tuesday, it's going to be slightly different than the show on Wednesday. So this is something I want to come back to more than once. Right, because you're always going to experience something different, you know, and you're also going to have a different roster too. We're not going to be the same, the, the same set of girls that are going to be there that I, they're going to change up as well. You know, it's not going to be the same set. So you're going to see a variety. I mean, and we have like, we have like six foot five Amazonian women, we have, you know, built IFBB pro bodybuilders. We have the girl next door like me, you know, like we have a mix of everything. So it's just going to be just amazing on what we can put together because there's so much a variety of different talent and it's not cookie cutter. I don't, I'm not a fan of cookie cutter. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited because I do believe I'm planting a seed and it's just about watching it blossom and not having too much of a rigid way of seeing how I want it to be. I need to have, be open and let it develop itself instead of me trying to force things to happen. So. Well, that's good that you're open to ideas and how you want things to, to move along and progress. Uh, just from the... Uh, just from the way you're presenting the show from the first show to the second show, what transitions and changes have been made, not only to the roster, but also to how you see the pre presentation evolving? Um, well, I definitely want more artistic elements to it, but believe it or not, I believe the first show is going to have more has or had more artistic element, like with the, with the flame dancer, uh, then than this one on April 2nd, just because I'm kind of limited on it. Um, so there's like the pros and the cons for each one. Now, the one that was on in September, it was a four hour show. I don't want no four hour show, that's way too long. So I'm doing two hour show for this one. And because I'm all about less is more short, you know, uh, short and sweet and just uh, quality. 
you know? And um, the thing is, is that also is amazing, Robert, is that a lot of these matches are sponsored. These matches are paid for by the fans. So it's almost like the fans create the show. Okay. So, yeah. How does that come about? Tell me about the sponsorship from the fans and how the fans create the show in this regard. Like, how, how did you come up with the notion that the fans will be sponsoring the shows uh, per match? And do they get to call what type of match it is based on the sponsorship? Absolutely. <laughs> They're so it's like really cool. Uh, so basically, I um, for for my industry, for the women women wrestling industry, I pretty much throw it out there to the to the fans that hey, I'm going to have a show. These girls are going to be booked for it, and I send them a list of girls, and then I'll say email me if you're interested in getting a match for the event. So they'll email me and say, hey, Jennifer, I would like to see um, Rapture go against De Des Desire, a 10-minute competitive match. And um, they pay for that match, and then that's part of the card inside the show. So it's, so it's a great way because the fans are getting what they want. The girls are getting an opportunity to have exposure and to do what they love to do. And, you know, all I really need to worry about is, like, the production costs of things. You know, but as far as like paying the talent, the talent gets paid by their fans and a story is being told as well. So like if the guy says, well, like I want the blindfold match or whatever. So he's so, so I just think it's fun. I think it's a great way of like letting the people kind of like decide on 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 what their match is, what they like. And then we just videotape that match in that in that setting and we we send it to them after the show so i dig it so so each person that uh that booked the match essentially uh that that sponsored the match gets a copy of the match they sponsored correct to get or they'll even get a copy of the entire show you know because i appreciate them so much because without them i don't know if i'd be able to financially pull it off to have a show so so i mean i'm I'm a giver anyway, so I would just give them a copy of the entire show and say, enjoy, and here's your special match. And they feel so special because they're like, oh, my gosh, I got my match in a public event. So, like, they think it's really cool, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have uh, referees for this as well, or are there also going to be judges the way LFC had last night with Lingerie Fighting Championship? Or is it just going to be one ref, pinfall submission, time limit draw? without putting it in the hands of the judges since you've kind of had some bad experience in doing that. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of judges. I'm sorry to cut you off, but man, right when you said judges, I'm like, no, nope, no judges. <laughs> I will have the rough, but no judges. Um, yeah. And so that's also another thing is like a couple of matches will be like the best of five falls, you know, and then there'll be like a first submission, like the main event. It's going to be one fall. It's going to be whomever submits first. So that can take a minute. That might take 10 minutes. We're, we'll, it can take longer, you know? So um, so we're just going to play each match differently. It's not going to be the same. And, uh, yeah, so definitely will be a ref and um, probably a female ref. And, yeah, so that's how it's going to be. And as things progress, are you going to have color commentators or like Lucha Vavum, are you going to have color commentators that are doing it live for the crowd as well that goes out on video? So you know, people get to hear what they're talking about? Uh, no, I don't have a commentator yet. I didn't even think about that. Thank you for, playing, for putting that in my mind. I'm like, I don't know why I didn't think that. I probably won't. I have an announcer, uh, an announcer there that will be announcing the girls. And we're just kind of like, we probably won't be commentating it, uh, at least not this time around. You know, because I think the audience will be able to see what's going on. And, there's, and um, yeah. So I don't think we're going to have one at this show. Okay. Well, just remember, if you ever need a ring announcer in the future, I'll make myself available. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the girls that you're bringing in now, you have two, two uh, professional bodybuilders that are going to essentially have their first match. Uh, we've, we've all heard all along, you know, the weights don't hit back, but apparently these two are going to be hitting back. Um, is this their first match? Do they have any sort of grappling experience, whether wrestling, judo, jujitsu, or whatever else? Or is it going to be kind of like a battle of the tough women because they can throw the weights around, they're going to try and throw each other around? Exactly. 
Uh, they do have a little bit of wrestling experience, not that much. So it's going to be exactly what you just said, kind of just them throwing their weight around and seeing who's the stronger female, you know. Um, and however, what's awesome about these two girls is that they really have a deep desire to learn. So like, I can't wait till like they achieve a certain level to where they look like pro, like real, real, real wrestlers. And they have these amazing bodybuilding physiques that can truly like really kick some butt, you know. Um, but it'll be interesting to just see how that, because power versus power, you know, who's the more powerful one. So, so I'm looking really, I'm looking forward to that match to, to watch that because those are rare to, rare to see. I don't see them very often. Right. I think, what was it? Gorilla Monsoon that used to say the irresistible force versus the immovable object. So this is kind of what we're going to be seeing on uh, April 2nd at the nerd. Uh, how'd you pick the new yes. uh, facility instead of uh, going back to future stars? Is it just this the right place? I know it's a bar with an MMA cage, uh, which, which gives it its own unique feel. But like, have you performed there before? Do you know, you know, like, how did all this come uh, come into play? Well, I have been to the nerd a few times. I actually did an LFC show at the nerd, and then uh, I went recently, a couple months ago, to Billy Blade with the Midget Mania Wrestling uh with it to to uh to the nerd bar for his show and so when i realized that they were that the owner of the venue was you know doing events there i'm like thinking well why not put women on fire and the reason why i chose that over future stars of wrestling is because future stars of wrestling is like in a warehouse it's not in a public area really so in on fremont street it's a very high traffic populated area so i feel like that's the location i need to be especially if i want to bring new people to see a new experience um and experience something different so i just feel like i'll get a lot more foot traffic coming into the bar versus coming into a warehouse makes so. sense all right let's go back to the to the midget wrestling thing Jen, I know you're short. You're only 5'2", but why are you at a midget show? Like, you surpass the height minimum or ha height maximum. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I actually wasn't part of that card that night. Um, I wanted to surprise uh, Des Dorada. She's one of the pro wrestling girls there, and I wanted to, like, surprise her. Surprise her. And so I asked Billy if I could kind of, like, do a run-in on her match which I did do and it was it was fun it was hilarious so I didn't actually wrestle that show uh but I have wrestled other shows for him and what's so funny is like my dad I've been wrestling for what 15 20 years yeah oh my god it was so fast so I've been in the business for a long time and my parents have never seen me wrestle before so when my dad finally came to LA he went to my my wrestling show and it was a midget wrestling so hit the very first show that he got to see his daughter wrestling it was me wrestling a little a little man <laughs> and it was it was hilarious you know but um i know i'm not quite i i feel like i'm a midget uh or a small person but uh but billy obviously you know he, he hires he hires other people that are even taller so it's kind of like a mix of everything it's just not all all small people or little people so eventually we're going to get a little person match at women of uh, women on fire you know what i would love to do is have a little person going against an amazonian could you imagine that six foot five with four foot three <laughs> Or something wouldn't that be interesting let's make it happen next show you know we're, we're yeah, booking the card from now it. so who's ready to sponsor that a little person versus an amazonian <laughs> the next women on fire right. show whether it's in la or vegas or laughlin or wherever else that that's the match to sponsor come on guys chime on in for it absolutely absolutely <laughs> that that'll be highly entertaining so yes what would actually be really cool is in the future you know, we're we're spitballing some ideas. This is only the second show that's coming about, and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I wish I could be in Vegas for it, but I'll definitely be there for the next one. Uh, Women on Fire Academy looks like it'll be opening up at some point. You know, you get your own school out of this. Yeah, and you know what's so amazing is I actually bought, well, I won't say I bought, one of my fans bought me a wrestling ring. 
So I have now a 20 by 20 wrestling ring and I have nowhere to put it. So, um, so yes, I'm, I'm like building myself up. Now, once I find the building to put the ring in, then I can offer, you know, to have an academy, to offer training classes, to offer anything and everything that would help develop us into uh, better performers and better athletes. So, uh, so that's definitely in the future. Absolutely. Wow. So you, so what are we going to call it? If you open up the Academy, the barbecue pit, the fire pit, like what's the name going to be? <laughs> the fire starters or the trailblazers, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> there you go. What, Women on fire trailblazer Academy. Boom. You got the name right there. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. So the, the, uh, I'm just excited for what the future beholds because, um, because I don't feel like I can really go wrong with it because it, it is, uh, it's something that it's not just like I just threw this together. This has been building and building and building for a long time. So I feel like it has a good solid foundation and it's right now at an emergence, you know, it's going to emerge into something beautiful. Yeah. And eventually you want to take this on the road. Is it going to strictly be a West coast thing? You know, California, Arizona, Nevada, maybe Oregon and Washington as well. Or, you know, you want to keep it like kind of localized for the time being as it expands. You know, you don't want too much of a like rushed expansion with some of the other promotions. Actually, I want it to be worldwide. And this is my and this is how I'm going to do it. So I've already even made a contact. There's a lot of women. And we all support each other We're like this big, huge community. So I said to this girl in Toronto, you want to hold event in Toronto. I said, okay, well, why don't we do it under Women on Fire? Because, and you know, since Canada isn't allowing any U.S. citizens in there, whatever, you hold the event, do it your way, and brand it under Women on Fire. So, therefore, there would be a whole other event, a Women on Fire event in Toronto. It's just that she would kind of have her own style, and she's an MMA fighter, so it, it would be a lot more probably intense, more competitive, more real than what kind of like mine would be. So kind of like how you were talking about each show being different, that's what it would be like. Each event would be different in different cities around the world, you know, and all I got to do is contact that one person or they contact me and say, hey, let's do an event in Germany or let's do an event here. And then if I back that, then now we're getting all these different women on fire everywhere. Um, they're just not like, I just won't be there like probably physically to like run the show. So, so you're creating the NWA, like, you know, the old territory days. So there's going to be women on fire, Canada, women on fire, Germany, women on fire, Japan, and so on and so forth. Women on fire, Argentina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want everybody to see this. <laughs> So that's, that's, that's cool, you know, but like I said, I'm open-minded. If there was a big, like, let's say Paul Heyman comes into the picture. Let's say some big production company comes into the picture and says, Hey, Jennifer, let's take it this route. I see this. Now I'll be open to whatever that idea is. I just want to make sure that I can kind of have my freedom and it's not taken over, taken over. I can't handle that. I don't like being told what to do. So, um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. But if it's just me doing all this, yes, I would like to expand it everywhere I can and have those women helping me do that. I dig it. You know, I, I can see you doing that and then bringing in some bookers on the side. But, hey, you're the big boss. This is your baby. So it's going to be your way or the highway. Um, mm -hmm. with, with all of this going on and everything else, like what was the seed that planted all of this? You said it was a long time coming. You know, you've worked for other promotions. People have tried to pigeonhole you and, you know, you need to be this style or you need to be this person or we want to change your your gimmick or your personality and force you in a box that you don't quite fit. But what was the, the seed that planted Women on Fire, you know, so long ago that eventually it blossomed into what we have coming now? Um, it's kind of like a, a lotus, it, like the flower. It, like I had to go through a lot of mud, um, a lot of crap, a lot of everything to, and, you know, and getting so frustrated in those moments of being challenged and having my, just not being able to do what I want to do. 
and feeling like I'm being controlled by other people. And I'm not talking about necessarily promotions or promoters per se. I'm talking about just people in my life, whether it be business, personal or whatever. And Women on Fire came about just because I'm part of a, a special, beautiful, hidden industry where women are courageous enough not only to like just give it their all, but they'll challenge men, right? And for whatever reason, that's been such a taboo. And I've been banned by numerous companies, uh, you know, because, oh, you're doing this. You, you put some dude in a headlock. We're going to ban your YouTube channel or we're going to do this. And I just always felt like I was like the scarlet letter like just kind of shunned from mainstream society. Um, and I, I, I've felt ashamed of what I do. So basically, and none of us girls are, we're empowered by it. We're empowered by taking on male opponents. And, you know, and we're not out to prove them and beat them up all serious and be like, you know, whatever. We're doing it in a, just as an athletic challenge. And um, for whatever reason, people haven't been able to take that on or accept that. Yeah, there's a lot of times where women win. So, so anyways, with my events and with my pro wrestling background, with everything, I just want to add pro wrestling, real matches, and mixed matches. And even if it's just two mixed matches where a woman goes against a man, hey, that to me that's huge, especially in a public in a public appearance because. I don't, I'm not all about women are more powerful than men. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I'm just saying, I want to do something that's never been done before and present that slice of the pie to the mainstream mix of people. Right. Um, it's interesting because Lucha has always had intergender matches. Well, not always, but has had intergender matches a lot longer than uh, in the United States. And then even Lucha Underground, when they were around, would have intergender matches. So why does it seem more taboo to have that in more either indie shows or other promotions here in the United States and Canada? Because it's real wrestling. It's real grappling. I mean, Lucha is more of a performance, a show, a choreographed match, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of like planning out, the. you kind of like, it's a choreographed match. It's just like pro wrestling in my mind. So but what if you and I were to go one-on-one -on -one competitive on the mats? You know, I put you in a front face lock and, and you know, and we roll around together and I beat you with an unscripted, physical, competitive grappling match. So Lucha doesn't, I have never, I haven't seen it. Have you? Not in Lucha, but I'm just surprised that promotions would sit there and want to ban you or not, not talk to you because we have Lucha that does that. And Lucha has been doing that for, for a while that, even though you're having real competitive matches, they'd be like, all right, well, if she's doing it for real, why not have her in our promotion? Like, that just doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Oh, uh, well, I haven't been banned from other promotions because I've done mixed wrestling. I'm just saying banned by like PayPal. I'm talking about YouTube. I'm talking about Stripe and Square and all these big companies where when I need them to run my business and they find out that I do mixed wrestling, they cut me, you know? So, it's not necessarily, I'm not talking about wrestling promoters. I'm more talking about companies, corporate companies. Yeah. So S some of the stuff that, that they are willing to share and then things that they're willing to ban don't always make sense. So it's unfortunate. Oh. I'm really surprised that PayPal would, would ban it as well. Yeah, I've been banned like four times to PayPal. I feel like my name is on the on their list, you know, the blacklist or whatever. Like I am like whatever. So I just learned never to use PayPal. So well, so it's just frustrating. Only Jennifer Thomas, you know, there there's probably like <laughs> nine of them in Vegas, like within a four mile radius of where you are. You're probably yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. So but you know, these are challenges that that's pretty much what led up to me creating women on fire. Because it's just like, okay, well, I'm not gonna put mixed wrestling in everybody's face and have a whole show based on male versus female. I'm going to just gradually mix it all together, like I said, make a kamikaze wrestling show, variety show, and see what happens. So, um, you know, I've even presented this to like MMA, like a Josh Barnett, you know, and I said, hey, can we use your facility to do this? Or do you think I could use a facility? And they unfortunately think of mixed wrestling as sex work. And I don't know why. 
Um, so it's just about removing that stigma from us. And that's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to be, I'm not in a, a, a negative light. We're in a beautiful light. It's just that everybody else, for whatever reason, they stereotype us as something negative and we're not, and it's, I don't want it to be that anymore. Um, you know, there, there have been the, the rumors in the past about it being sex work or leading to sex work. Once the cameras go off, you know, that could probably be part of the image. Uh, I know you personally, and I know that's not your thing. So, you know, you as a person, you know, see the dog, the dog's confirming it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, dog got caught underneath my foot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so uh, yeah, exactly. But any industry, you can have that kind of stuff happening, you know? So, so I don't get it. Like massage therapy, there's massage therapists that go into people's hotel rooms or homes or whatever. They never know what they're doing behind closed doors. It's not just for mixed wrestling. It's for a lot of other industries as well. Where you're meeting with people one-on-one -on -one, um, in a one-on-one -on -one type of experience or atmosphere. Well, hopefully you, you know, it's, it's safe. I mean, I know you can grapple, but you know, there's the safety issues as well. And at least you, you have some sort of safety measures for all of that. Uh, with Women of Fire now, not necessarily only shining a light on this, but exposing people to other aspects of grappling, whether it was the, the intergender mixed stuff, whether it's, uh, you know, BJJ, um, you know, tough woman competition with, with the two IFBB pros, um, even, even the fun match of just like, hey, you get out of the audience and we're going to spin you around and you're the sucker that's about to get beat up. Um, talk about that one. Like, did someone just sit there and pitch that? Because you said the matches are sponsored. So with that one, it's like, hey, I want to see some random guy get picked out of the audience and fight a woman. And that's how it came about. And then you added the stipulation of we'll spin you around and that's who you end up with. And also with that, uh, could that be a, another match for a woman where if she's already fought either on the previous card or I'm sorry, in the previous matches or, you know, future matches that she'll end up having two matches that night? So to answer your first question, who sponsored that match? Guess who? It was me myself. <laughs> I put that together. That was all my idea. And I'm like, I'm paying for that. I'm going to make sure this happens. So that was all on me. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. And as far as the girls, we were thinking about just the girls that don't have matches because there's so many girls that want to be part of this event. If I was to have a match for every single one of them, we would be there till like two in the morning. So there's, so I, so basically what we're doing is we're going to do seven matches on Friday and then what other matches come later, you know, that fans order. We'll have them do at a separate location the next day, but it just won't have that event feel. It won't be an announcer. There won't be music. It's just going to be more, uh, just more like, you know, a custom, a custom. We call them custom matches. Um, so, so the girls that don't have any matches that night, they're going to be the ones that circle the guy. So they get an opportunity to wrestle at the event. Yeah. And if you could choose one of the girls to fight to fight this guy uh you know let's take you out of the equation because i know how much you like to compete but let's say you get to choose and it's not just spin the guy around who would you pick to face him i mean i would choose either rapture or des desire because both of them like rapture is like just a powerhouse you know what i mean and i i feel like the guy would probably like say his prayers and like, or just start running out the door, you know? And then when you have Des, who's just really like high level trained woman, and I have full confidence in both of them that they would be able to destroy any man that's in that audience, you know? Um, and I, I just can't wait to see the face of the guy after he gets, you know, and I'm kind of wondering how many men would put themselves in a position to possibly be humiliated in a public environment. What if their girlfriend or wife is there with them? You know, like, so, so it's gonna be interesting because this is the first time I've ever done this. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm kind of curious to see how many men will jump up to wanna come and wrestle a woman. 
you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to show me a clip uh, after it's all said and done. The guy that actually gets selected, and when you spin him around, who he uh, who he ended up getting stuck with, because he's yeah. getting stuck. Uh, I, I've seen some of the girls uh, that you promote. They they look pretty tough and look pretty mean. So you know, yes. good luck to this guy. <laughs> I know. Good luck to him. I hope he has a couple drinks beforehand and a couple drinks after. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So it's just going to be really exciting. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm nervous too at the same time because, you know, like this is, like I said, my first public appearance. Um, but, you know, anything that where you're growing and expanding and you're challenging yourself, you're going to have nerve issues, you know, you're going to be a little nervous. So I understand that's part of the game. Right. And if he wins, does he get a free shot? <laughs> Hey, I might just do that. He's not winning though. What are you talking about? That's that was a I good one. You caught if. me there. I said if. That's like an incentive if. for you know how people are with an incentive for a free drink. Oh, I'll go fight somebody for for a shot or whatever. So you know, for the chance to win a shot, um, we just gotta win a fight. He won't be getting he won't be getting a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'll just give him a shot to make him feel better about his loss. That's what I'll do. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Well, so it sounds like you got th- things progressing and things moving along the way you want them to move along. With with everything that's coming about, what has been the general reaction? What was Nerd's reaction when you presented this to them and saying, "Hey, I want to bring an all female card run by all women to your facility." Like, how quick were they to jump on and go, "Boom, let's lock it in for Friday, April 2nd? Well, I'll be honest with you, Billy Blade helped me out on that. A lot. He was kind of like my connector because because I know Billy Blade and me and Billy have a good relationship together. Uh, you know, he has also a good relationship with the owner of the nerd. So it just I think it was more about oh, and then I sent him one of the flyers, the owner one of the flyers of the girls, and so I think that helped out a lot too. You know, like wow, these are really like amazing hot women here. Um, so so I think Billy was the majority of that. Because I don't know how far I would have gotten without Billy, but I would hope that I, you know, he would have still been open for it and said, hey, let's try this out. Let's do this, you know, but I definitely give credit to Billy for really turning on that green light and making it a go. I dig it. Mm -hmm. I've never met Billy. I'd love to go to one of his shows. So maybe you can arrange that at some point that I'll get to talk to Billy. Um, with, With all of this and like, you know, we've had the Me Too movement and in professional wrestling, we had the speaking out movement. Uh, how much more excitement is it, or at least a relief for female competitors knowing that they'll be working for a woman and not having to worry about a Me Too or speaking out situation? I think that's extremely important and it's huge. I think that girls, us women feel much more safer, much more comfortable, much more everything when we know that it's all of us together and we don't really have to worry about, you know, uh, the promoter of the promotion saying, hey, let's go to dinner, you know, or feeling like you have to say yes in order to move your way up in that promotion, you know. That's what I've been dealt with, with my professional wrestling and everything. It's just kind of like, it seems like I've always had to feel, and which I never really did it because I don't believe in kissing ass. I believe in kicking ass. <laughs> so, so that's probably why I never made it to like where I thought that I wanted to be back in the past. Um, but I think women want to support each other. And I think women will work harder for each other. And we all know that we have this huge support of of all of, of all of us and we don't have to go answer to a male promoter we don't have to worry about getting asked to dinner we don't have to worry about the hand on the leg when we're sitting next to them you know what i mean it's just kind of like there's so much just it's more stress-free it's more like we can just it's just we can move forward and and shine in our own light and not have to worry about being uh compromised or having our morals or ethics compromised you know so Think that's important i dig it and uh what free agent would you like to see on the roster at some point at least on a fight card 
you know, because everyone has their dream main roster, you know, WWE, uh, AEW rosters, but what free agent would you love to have around? Beth Phoenix. Okay. What do you think? I think Beth's retired. I know she's doing co commentary for NXT, but she's not in the ring. I think Beth, Beth would be amazing. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, that's a hard question. Like, in my mind, I'm just thinking, like, in my mind, she she was the first person that, like, came into my head. You know what I mean? Because, like, I've always felt like I've always admired her so much because I've always felt like she was, like, the full package deal and everything. You know, and if she could bring anything. She would just be huge to be a part of right. of something like this because she's just so, she, she's an amazing woman, you and know, great on the mic, inside too. and out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I've always been. I've yes, exactly. I, every time I would watch her at OVW, because me and Beth, like we did OVW together before she got called to TV, and she's just like I would just admire her in every sense because she just seemed like a pro on everything that she did. So I would love to just have a well-rounded, great, talented woman like her that's really tough and strong, and I think she would represent women on fire. Great. I dig it. You know, we'll we'll see what happens uh, in the future. Maybe she'll uh, maybe she'll make an appearance. Yeah, I think I'd have to have like Paul Heyman on board or to do something. I don't know. Like, I feel like I have to have some backing first, you know, to uh, to get to get Beth. But uh, yeah, she's she's great. Um, well, if you get what else? Oh, expand, I wanted. Sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I'm sorry. You wanted to say I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, like, uh, also, that I failed to mention this, but for one of my last events, I like to do an interactive story, meaning, like, okay, so I had this match where it was, uh, I don't know if you know Harry, Harry. Do you know Sin Bodhi from Freak Show, Freak Show oh, Wrestling? Sin's awesome, man. I love that guy. You know, last time yeah, I was in I Vegas, uh, I got to see Freak Show at uh, Los Rages, the Ro the Rob Zombie concert. They put on a wrestling show over there, and I talked to Sin. Great guy. Yeah, absolutely. And I used to be part of his uh, Freak Show. I used to be the Jack Canary for Sin Bodhi. He had a wrestler there named Harry. Harry had a missing leg, and he was a wrestler. And I just found him so fascinating, watching him jump off the ropes, do these flips, and freaking beat people up in the ring when he had no leg. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So at one of my events, I had him pretend that he was an audience member and he was there with his friend who was also a wrestler. And then I hired like a mean looking pro wrestler. And basically I had them have an altercation in the crowd. So nobody knew that they were wrestlers. They thought this was like a real feud and some big bully was picking on the handicap. Poor Harry here. Next thing you know, it gets, people were like about to call the police. Um, but they but they threw it into the ring. They did a match. And, you know, Harry's jumping off the ropes and he beats the bully's butt. And, and everybody's like, oh, my God, this was a setup. Like, oh, my God, this is like, and they were like so inspired by it because it had two messages. Anything is possible. You don't have limitations of because of your handicap or whatever. And then two is anti-bullying, you know. And it was a match that was not on the card. It was like a surprise match for everybody to see. And I would love to do more of those, like in the future. I don't have any plans for this event. But I would like to do surprise kind of like messages, like that send a good message to the audience through wrestling where, where people are kind of like caught off guard by it. No, I like that. That, that would be a lot of fun. I wish I could have been there to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. All of, all the stuff that's going on, you know, the the unfortunately the this whole COVID thing has knocked out a lot of events that could have happened sooner. You know, I think the initial date was May, but COVID hit, so you had to push it back to September. And now things are finally opening up in April, and you get to do it at the Nerd. Uh, people that want to come to the show, what's the cost of a ticket to enter? It's only ten dollars. We're making it really affordable. You know, ten dollars a ticket. You know, and so, uh, you know, and plus, yeah, so we're just making it affordable. We're just all about filling in, like, getting people in to see it. So 
So we're not about making money right now. We want people to see it. That's what's most important. So I'd rather make the price very affordable. Everyone can afford it because we're all going through hard times than try to charge $25 or $30 a ticket. That's, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I think more about the people. So I want to do what's best for the people and try to entertain them in an affordable way. All right, let's do this. Uh, now, World of Fire is blown up. You, you're getting a huge audience. Now you get your version of WrestleMania. What do you want Women on Fire 1 to look like? I want Women on Fire to be like every match is like a main event match. So it's, 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 that's, that's my goal. I want everybody... I, to be honest, I'm not that far in my mind yet, but what's so amazing or what I think would be amazing is because when I was trying to be with WWE, it would talk about uh, creating a vision board, you know, and kind of like write down what you want in your life and manifest it and the laws of the universe and everything like that. Right. So I did that and I had made this drawing. I'm a horrible, I draw horribly. But I was in my mind pretending of being like on the top rope, like a WrestleMania match, having all these thousands of fans and just feeling like I made it. Like this was my moment, I made it here. And so I, you know, I, so that was my vision for so long. And I just think it would be so amazing having that woman on fire WrestleMania type of show. And there I am on the ropes, celebrating my moment that I've always dreamed of, not only as a wrestler, but as being the owner of the freaking promotion itself. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like, that's just so much more than what I would have ever imagined. You know, like to me, I'd probably just fall on my knees and start crying. <laughs> like, I seriously would. Just because I know it would be an emotional moment. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> Don't start crying, you got the dog in your lap. I know. It's not tough to cry, right? You're so that's to... my goal. I dig it. I so like that's it. my goal. It's just I, I want to I want to inspire women, and I want women to know that anything is possible. You know that we don't allow, we don't need to allow to be held down or suppressed. You know, so that that's and I don't, I don't, I never asked for this. It all came to me. It's not like I like said, hey, Jen, like, I never planned for any of everything that I've done. Even wrestling, I was never even a wrestling fan. You know, I was doing fitness and bodybuilding, and then I would run into Luther Reigns at the gym or Mark Henry at the gym and Stone Cold at the gym, and I didn't even know who they were. Like, that's how clueless I was about wrestling. But they would start talking to me, and they planted that seed, and it came into my life. I never expected wrestling to be a part of my life and be so, so big. Uh, a part of it. And I don't see myself doing anything else. People are like, oh, so what are you going to do after wrestling? I don't, I don't see anything else. I'm just doing what I love to do and doing each day, every day I can. What would you have told 15 year old Jennifer Thomas about her future? Like you get to go back in time, you meet yourself at 15 years old and go, guess what? This is the way the path is going to lead you. What would you tell her? Okay, so if I was to tell her what my path, if I was to tell her what her future was going to be, mm -hmm. I think she would be pretty excited about it, you know? Like, she'd be like, no way, really? You know, like, because I've always been a sports-oriented girl. I've always been that, you know, the, the tomboy, you know? So, and I've always thought, like, even when I was younger, I thought about being a sports journalist. I wanted to be in the 1992 Olympics doing track and field. Like I've always been in the athletic sports scene all my life, I feel. So I, I definitely feel like I'm in the right spot and that I've always meant to be here. Um, but it's funny because I also tried for criminal law. I tried for psychology. I tried for hotel and restaurant management. I tried to do other things that I thought were more like my parents would be more proud of me or something, you know, uh, they just never worked out. Uh, so I just kind of feel like if you do what you love to do, you'll always be taken down the right path. Now, it doesn't mean it's an easy path. It's actually a very challenging path. But you're meant to be there and it's going to take you to greater 
and greater things for self-growth and to making a difference in other people's lives. But I think the 15-year-old Jennifer would be quite thrilled to know of her future. <laughs> I don't know if she'd be happy that she's not married yet at 47 years old, though. You know, because 15-year-old Jennifer always dreamed about her Prince Charming coming into her life. And that's that hasn't happened yet. So anyways, that's the only thing. Well, look at it like this. You might not have your Prince Charming, but you're building the castle. Yeah, and I need to wait. Then I need to go find the king, right? <laughs> they're gonna have they're gonna have a hard time getting through those doors. <laughs> so well, if they're worth right, it, yeah, they'll lift right. the gate. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. And you know what? We could make this really bad if we wanted to, but I'm not going there. <laughs> save, that, save that for when we hit pause. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so no, like I, I feel like um, everything's moving along the way it should. I believe that uh, I have a, uh, all of us women, is if I, we all work together and we couldn't be where we're at without each other. This isn't a solo type adventure. This is an all of us adventure. And we're just gonna ride the white, we're gonna ride the wave together and um, and see what comes from it. So like, I really appreciate you giving like me this opportunity to speak on this and to, you know, just express myself and, and to let everyone know, you know, what the future beholds for women's wrestling. Awesome. Jennifer Thomas, where can we find you and Women on Fire on social media if we want to connect? Well, for my social media, Instagram is Russell Jennifer Thomas. Everybody thinks I'm saying Russell. I'm not saying Russell. I'm saying Russell. Russell Jennifer Thomas. And that's uh, and then for Twitter, it's at Real Jen Thomas. And then um, for my Facebook, it's also at Russell Jennifer Thomas. Uh, and then I do have a Woman on Fire Instagram. Um, which is at W O F, I believe. At W O F. Actually, it's W A O F. Uh, let's see. Double check. Oh, you're right. W A, because I keep on forgetting athletes. Yeah. Yes. Women athletes on fire. Yeah, Thank that's... you for the correction on my own promotion. <laughs> we got to make sure we get this right. Jennifer Thomas, Women on Fire, Women right? Athletes on Fire, W A uh, on Fire.com. Uh, the Instagram also is uh, WA on fire at, on Instagram. So everything's cool with that. Thank you so much for your time. Eight, Friday, April 2nd at the Nerd Women on Fire live wrestling show. $10 for your tickets. Follow Jen Thomas everywhere you can and have a great show. I wish I can be there this time, but I'll be there next time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and I appreciate all my fans out there listening and watching.